Kentucky, this is Mary Jo Perino. Tonight, COVID-19 prompts big changes for next month's Kentucky Derby. The Secretary of State wants a different election plan in November than we had in June. And I'll talk with NBA insider Adam Zagoria about Kenny Payne's exit. All that and more is next on Hey Kentucky. Welcome to Hey Kentucky, along with LEX 18 Sports Director Keith Farmer. And if you saw the coronavirus numbers today from the state of Kentucky, you might have done one of these. It was over 1,100, <laughs> but a lot of, there was a pro, data processing glitch, so a lot of those tests weren't previously counted. Yeah, that and the positivity rate uh, seems to be close to getting to where we wanted. It's not down 4%, but it's in that five to six percent range so a little bit of good news there a little bit all right here's some more news churchill downs has released a covid 19 era plan for next month's delayed derby which includes limiting the crowd size to under 23,000 and closing the infield the limitation brings the event's capacity down to about 14 percent of the record-setting crowd for more than 170,000, which was at the 2015 derby Reserved seating will also be limited to a maximum of 40% of its 60,000 seat capacity. Standing room only or walk around tickets have been eliminated. Pre-ordered general admission tickets will be refunded. Temperature checks, medical questionnaires, physical distancing and face coverings will be required. And upon entry, each guest will receive a healthy at the track bag. Also today, we learned that Hall of Fame trainer D. Wayne Lucas is isolating at home following a positive COVID-19 test. And Keith, we're all thinking about him uh, because he's been around a mm -hmm. long time. I'm sure he wants to be on the backside, uh, but it'll the roar of the crowd will not be the same. Oh, it's going to look so much more different. Uh, you know, I said last week I didn't think they were going to have fans at least in the infield. We've seen now the Indianapolis 500, the Masters, no fans, yet they're still going to go on. Still 23,000. I mean, you know, that's like taking Rupp Arena and putting it inside that huge monstrosity that is Churchill Downs. You're, you're really not going to hear much of a crowd. No, it'll still look really empty. Uh crazy. All right, less than three months out from November's election, a draft of Kentucky's preliminary voting plan from Secretary of State Michael Adams is under review now by the governor. Absentee voting for everyone is something that Andy Bashir has been recommending for the general election after it helped lead to the highest primary turnout since 2008. But both Bashir and Adams have publicly said that they want more in-person polling locations, and that is included in the plan along with expanded early voting. As for the scaled back absentee voting, Adam says part of the problem is the county clerks not being able to handle such an increase and the Postal Service has said they're worried about being able to handle all the votes this time around. Before the primary, the post office sent me a letter, the postmaster did, that said we can handle your absentee ballot load capacity for the primary. We can handle a million absentee ballots. That was good news. That actually influenced my opinion about having this for the primary. Well, guess what? They didn't send me a letter like that this time. They don't think they can handle two million absentee ballots without some slippage. Adam says it took six weeks to put the draft together and that it's only fair to allow Governor Bashir a chance to review it. He says he's confident he and the governor can come to an agreement on a voting plan. And Keith, uh, these two from the primary till now have worked very well together in making concessions on both sides and, and being able to come to an agreement, which has been great to see. It's a love fest and uh, you know I, I just wish we could see more of this because this is what we want from our leaders working together to get things done for the Kentuckians for the American people that's all we want to see and, and for me I just want to see more polling places like in Louisville and Lexington especially which I think they want to do and that's a great thing and starting it earlier so we can be in person and early instead of mm. just having that one day, which yeah. is good. Uh, Kentucky's public schools have mixed responses to the governor's recommendation to hold off on in-person learning until late September. Leaders with Williamstown Independent Schools say they will stick to their reopening plan, which calls for parents to choose a virtual or in-school option for August 26th. Catholic schools around the state are also planning a return to the classroom. At LCA in Lexington, students will not be required to mask up. On the other end of the spectrum, the Lewis County Board of Education has voted to delay in-person instruction to November 5th. And while the governor's directive about September 28th is called a recommendation, 
Superintendents have talked about possible consequences for not following that guidance. Um, Keith, I will note one other thing that I saw Lexington Catholic is asking for no one to take pictures and post them to social media of people not following the rules. Yeah, um, good luck with that. <laughs> and um, I guess it's good to bring it up, but I mean, there are, are hotlines everywhere. The NBA has a snitch line for if somebody breaks that bubble. <laughs> I mean, I think we need to keep each other, hold each other accountable uh, during this pandemic. So uh, hopefully they'll reverse decision on that. But, you know, uh, it was a recommendation. If he wants it to, to do something more, then he needs to make it a mandate and say start, you know, September 26th, 28th, whatever that date was. Listen, I'm hopeful that we will see um, if, if these schools can do it the right way, that maybe we can all start going back at some yes. point. That would be great. Mm -hmm. um, after a weekend of off-campus house parties, the University of Kentucky has warned students that it will not tolerate that behavior during a pandemic. A spokesman says UK was notified that the parties were larger than 10 people, plus students were not wearing masks or social distancing. He said against COVID-19 therefore violate the student code of conduct. School students to adjust, but if the parties continue, UK could take disciplinary action. Meanwhile, at UofL, the president says if administrators catch wind of students having parties and large gatherings that result in the spread of the coronavirus, the university will start contact tracing to find out where it came from. Keith, this is uh, gonna be a totally different college experience uh, than anyone else has ever had. They haven't even started classes yet. Yeah. And so there's, you know, usually it's, a, it's the excuse of, oh, I needed to blow off some steam. I needed, you know, just to, to relax a little bit after all that hard work during the week. This isn't a good sign going forward with some of these universities. And so they will have to hold them up on that, that code of conduct. And it will be interesting to see what happens. We need the university students to realize they're lucky to be on campus. So follow all the rules. I know just hard to tell an 18 to 19 and 20 year olds to follow all the rules when they're away from home for yeah. the first time. It's tough. Uh, let's turn to college sports. While football leagues seem to be calling off the 2020 season left and right, hopes for an NCAA basketball season remain high. Several power conferences had early discussions about playing games in a bubble type setting, adding that it's a route gaining traction due to student athletes ability to take online classes. As far as we know, the SEC hasn't been part of those talks up to this point, but we do know that the Kentucky basketball program has established its own bubble very effectively to get players on campus and settled in safely. So some have asked if the SEC could look to Lexington for inspiration, or even if Kentucky could slightly expand its bubble and host conference games here in town, which Keith, I'm sure they would be more than happy to do if that meant there was a college basketball season. I, it would be awesome. And let's just think about it for a second. You've got uh, probably four courts at your disposal here in Lexington because you've got the two practice courts, men's and women's, at the Joe Craft Center. you got Rupp, and then you've got Memorial Coliseum. All could be used. Uh, it's just a matter of where you house those teams that would come in and where they would stay and all that. Yeah, but it, it could work. I mean, it, it could work. It's, the NBA has shown that there is a yes. way to do the bubble. Now, they're not students, they're professionals, so there is a lot more that goes into that sort of a plan. Up next on Hey Kentucky, we get a basketball insider's perspective on the shakeup for UK basketball. Adam Zagoria will address this week's departure of assistant Kenny Payne. That's next.